I like the name Cindy Bullins because you know why? It's more prettier for a woman like her, especially when she was young and sweet back in the days, yet tough and hip with a tomboyish look. She was in popular groups such as Cindy and Bob Singers, who appeared as a backing group on Atlantic Crossing, performed by English pop rock star Rod Stewart, The Refugees with Deborah Holland and Wendy Wildman, The Sexolettes with Bobby Dimple, Denise Joel, Kenny Nolan, Letty Jo Randall, and Vincenta Cementa. That appeared on Shirley Wood, taken from the 1975 album Disco Tex and the Sexolettes Review, done by Disco Tex and his Sexolettes. She made her debut as a background singer behind Jean Clark, Elton John, and Pauline Matthews, better known as Kiki D, probably on Don't Go Breaking My Heart. The 11th Hour that did Hollywood Hot, probably Polly Cutter on One Day at a Time, taken from the family sitcom of the same name with Bonnie Franklin, Pat Harrington, Mackenzie Phillips, and Valerie Bertinelli, and most everybody else. I hate the name Sidney Bullins, especially when a woman like her, as someone special, that God made her to be changed into a trans man like him that really grosses me out. Plus, she has gone sick in the head, driving herself crazy. That's why it made the whole world turn upside down. Plus, I don't like it when she chopped up her hair and removed her breasts just to make her look masculine. That's why I'm very saddened about the way she looks now. It's so depressing of how a woman named Cindy Bullins died as a female in 2012 and a new man born as Sidney Bullins as a male that same year. Can you believe how confused she is in the world of today? She is now a mixed up person in the world of nowadays. I'm not too keen about Cindy singing the lead, but I like it when she sang back up for Elton John and Pauline Matthews on Don't Go Breaking My Heart and almost everybody else. So here she is on American Bandstand performing her lost unknown pop hits, Steal the Night and Too Close to Home. I've seen this lady's picture everywhere, I've listened to her music, and I visualized her uh, without ever having met her the, as a, uh, a strong, powerful, big woman, you know, like, wow. And I, all of a sudden, this little bitty girl walked in like a coiled spring. She goes, doing, you know. She is very special. Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Lundy. <laughs>
Hello. Gentlemen, without them, you'd be in a lot of trouble. That's Shall we take care of that right now? That's for sure. Let's, yeah. uh, I say, we'll start with the man furthest over uh, in the red shirt. Trantham Whitley on keyboards. Nice to see you, sir. The gentleman here. Howard Epstein. Howard. Gentleman behind drums. Tom Mooney. Thank you, Tom. And last but not least. Mark Doyle. Mark, nice to have you with us. Mm -hmm. What kind of jobs did you have before you became a singer? Uh, mostly gas station work. Pumping gas, and I swept floors. I was a short order cook. I licked <laughs> envelopes. Uh, you name it, I did it. <laughs> Didn't somewhere along the way it occur to you that you were wrong in thinking you might become a singer? No, not really. Uh, I just had this kind of blind drive that uh, I had something to, to give to rock and roll. And really, it's rock and roll. More than singing, it's the writing and the performing and uh, Did you, all the I stuff. beg your pardon to interrupt. Did you write everything on that album? Yes, and I co-wrote one, the next song that we're going to do with Mark Doyle. Uh, that brings up a subject. Uh, if I were able to write, I would be inclined to put all of my own stuff in the album. Do you do that? I'm sorry. Is this your second album? Yes. Uh, did you do it in the first one, too? Yeah, I wrote, uh, I wrote all the songs, co-wrote, too. Are you ever going to run us stuff? I hope not. Uh, that's, uh, you know, it might happen. I hope it doesn't. If it does, though, uh, that's all right. I'm not opposed to doing other people's material. I want to jump back for a second. During that period of pumping gas and licking envelopes and all those <laughs> dumb things you did, was there anybody along the way that said, hey, you're good, you ought to do other things, or did anybody give you a little helping hand? Well, when I finally moved to California from the East Coast, uh, Bob Crew, I met Bob Crew, and he was my catalyst. Uh, he, I had a knapsack and a guitar, and he... Uh, met me. For the, for the uninitiated, this man is an artist, a producer, a writer, a performer. He's guided and helped an awful lot of other people. He's a, he always happened to be a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, I don't know where to go from there. Do you, do you offer any hope for anybody who ever reaches the despair and says, oh, I've got to give this up? Sure, you just got to keep going. You know, I, if you want to do it, I figured my odds were that someday I was going to make it if I didn't give up. So. What was the Elton John story? Did you con him into a job? <laughs> Sweet uh, young thing like you, Buffalo, this man? Uh, not exactly. I did crash a party where he was at, and uh, I decided that I would stay after I saw that he was there. And uh, I met his manager and uh, him throughout the night. And uh, he just asked me, after he found out that I was a singer, he asked me if I would go on the road with him. And two days later, I was rehearsing, and the next week, I was on the road. Sounds like a bad B movie of the <laughs> old days. Would you sing another song? I sure would. This is the one you, you two co-wrote? Again, the title, please. Too Close to Home. Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Bullins, please. <laughs> 